I'd say that they're thinking of that now. We're off now. And we're off. So it'll be about two hours and ten minutes later that the first of the runners will reach Melbourne. And already we can see Yumara Kanga in the green shirt just behind the car which is going to pull out of our view now. And Kanga... Here we are, the leading bunch, with uh, our two we're dead heat there. <laughs> Austin right. and Kanga dead heat in front. <laughs> right. And I think that would be the pole behind by the look of him. By the look of the... Uh... The singlet, I, yes. yes. I've never seen the pole run, but I would say that would be him behind him. We Sosinski. can't see his number. Yes, yeah, Sosinski, Jersey, Sosinski. We've got to look at him perhaps there in a moment. The number main problem... five, yes, it's uh, Sosinski. The main problem with Steve will be whether he can mentally last out the, the 42 kilometres. It's a long run, long way if you're not used to it. Uh, it depends how much acceleration, how many bad patches you go through and uh, what, you, what you're feeling like when you go through the bad patch and how the others treat you when you go through a bad patch. Pity. Here we are back in the, uh, the general field, but I would like to, uh, uh, to make a comment later, if I can, just as we get closer to the finish, uh, about the uh, sprint finish. I disagree a bit with Gary Cousins uh, about uh, what natural speed you have to, uh, to finish. I think it really depends very much on how, much, uh, how fresh you are at the end, uh, how fast you are, because your kangaroo, in fact, is a very fast 400 metre runner much faster than Di Costello, yet Di Costello has beaten him over the last bit in both the marathons that he's raced against him um, because he was fresher than him. Well this is the scene back at Black Rock again as the main body of the field is going through and we haven't seen any of the lady runners yet. Graham, have any passed you? Yes Bill, we've had uh, I think four or five go past us and only within the last two or three minutes. So Trevor, uh, how would you rate their times at this point of the event? Well, it's a little bit hard to say what sort of time they're going to run, but I, I believe the first, the leading lady was Margaret Redden from Queensland, who's run two, for around 2.47 previously. She wasn't too far in front of Barbara Burns, uh, with Barbara McKerrow running third. They all look quite good. They're all uh, athletes who have run under 2.50 for a marathon. It's very hard to say probably what, perhaps what they'll run today, but... Um, We've had those three go through looking OK, fairly close to each other, so it's a little bit hard to perhaps, perhaps predict that uh, the girl who's leading at present might be the first female to finish. Uh, after them, there's been a couple, of, uh, a couple more girls go through. So, um, and as well as that, now we're seeing a very, very large pack of runners continue to go through in la you know, large numbers of people, uh, all shapes and sizes, all styles and actions and whatever else. So we're really seeing the middle of the field come through now, perhaps the sub-three-hour type athletes. Uh, that's getting along now to the very business end of the race. I believe that the race uh, always has run this way, and that's where they are. Just, just turn into the around the Alwood Beach, heading towards the uh, St Kilda Marina. When they turn right there, it's all home territory. Me, I used to run this every morning for something like four years, um, so I know it backwards now. It's a very nice, easy run into into St Kilda Road, and. Uh, I'd be liking Austin at this stage. I think that uh, he's looking all right. It's just whether his legs can hold out for the race, the part that you don't know. I mean, he's got the grimace on his face, um, but that's natural when you're, when you're running a marathon because it's physical when running out. I must admit this because he's looking very, very comfortable and the Kanga doesn't look too bad either. So it's, it's one of the most interesting marathons I've ever seen. They look, the three of them, you could close your eyes, put a hat in and say each one of them, you have as much chance of picking a winner as, uh, as the best form judge. Kanga still in front, Austin and Skazinski right on his hammer and we've gone past the 35k mark, the distance of the marathon 42.195 kilometres and we look from the great to perhaps the stragglers but they certainly are doing a marvellous job over this gruelling journey uh, the famous origins of the marathon going back many many years of course and uh, these men carrying on a great tradition Yumara Kanga in the top left hand corner of your screen in the green singlet leading from Steve Austin in the white Jersey Skazinski in the red and there you see the scenes at Black Rock as the runners file past after starting this morning at 8 o'clock at Frankston and we have really a perfect day and everything looks set for one of the classic marathon finishes, certainly one of the best finishes we've ever seen in the Big M. This is, this is start easy, this is, this is the relaxation, this is the break that you need, that Steve's legs will need because as soon as imperceptibly, as soon as you start to run downhill, 
I, th I knew that uh, a track was downhill or uphill, even though the, the engineers didn't, because you, your legs could feel it yes. as you get to get tired in the 10,000 metres. And that brake uh, coming downhill will be, it could be enough. If a Brani remembers that he kangas a guy who also surges he, and comes here back here to he goes getting a break. A yeah, I don't like, as I said before, I don't like what Steve's doing. But Steve has to hang on to him now. This is, this is precise. A kanga also runs on confidence. Well, yeah, he has to hang on to him. Yep. Years. He's coming into the last kilometre of the race now. The Only a bit of the on the road. It's, it's difficult for anyone to comprehend just how fast these guys run. OK, five-minute mile. Anyone says a five-minute mile is not all that quick until they try and test it themselves. And they run 26 of them in a row. Yeah, and that's right. But even if you drag it down to a quarter-mile uh, segments, it's about 75 seconds or so for a quarter-mile. Um, and that's uh, shifting. That's 37 seconds or so for a 220. And not many people can run that for a 220. And they have to run, you know, four times 26. What's that? 104 consecutive quarter-miles in 76 seconds or so. And that's as quick as most footballers can run a, a quarter mile. It's, it's, it's fairly quick. It's a great effort. Here he is coming to the finish. Three fifteen thirty one. That is the approximate time. Here's two fifteen thirty one. I suppose one way disappointing, but we we saw a great race. Uh, I would like to have seen a. Uh, a better time for it as anyone would and I think that the Kanga will be disappointed because that's his slowest ever marathon beating so last year. Here's Steve Austin. It's a good first up. I'd love to see him in London. We're going to see him I think next year because he wins that for being the first Australian through. It's a good first up marathon and uh, let's, let's hope he has a, a foundation in there now that he can build on. Well, Australians certainly telling on a few of them there, Ron. It's actually good to... I love to see these people uh, going through. I mean, it, it's easier to be the winner, quite frankly, than to be these guys, because this is hurting. I, I ran a marathon when I first started as a bit of training, and I ran it in two hours 45. And I, at that stage, there was a chap called Alf O'Connor, who was a solicitor, and he was president of the Victorian Marathons Club, and he'd won uh, a South Australian marathon in two hours 45, exactly that. And one, I thought, two, well, one, two, one, two, he's a guy to sit along with and go with. And when I trotted out, I felt so... Look at some of those. I, I felt this was the right pace, but he was too slow. But then... As I got tired and towards the end of the race, I was doing what this guy was doing, walking along fairly slowly and trying to go lamppost by lamppost, walk the lamppost and jog a lamppost. Saw Alfo, saw Alfo coming, uh, tried to run with him and he was going what seemed to be the same pace but seemed to me at that stage like a sprint and I just mm. couldn't stay with him. And that's, these guys are feeling that much tougher and it's that much harder for them than the people up in front and I admire them, I think, if not more than the guys uh, at front because they're really putting their heart and soul into it to do, get to the finish line. 625 with Les Crawford from Sometimes the ladies get pretty thin and it's hard to tell the difference. We've got an F on the number, so you should be looking for F on the number. The marathon runners of all sorts, the true marathon runners, are fairly thin people. And it's hard to pick. Is that a lady there? It looks like it is, isn't it? Yes, it's, yeah, it's it is. number four and Margaret Redden. Margaret Redden from uh, Queensland. She's uh, she yep. come down. She's uh, Manoa. Very good indeed, yeah, she's a good runner, it's one of her, her, her first runs, she's winner of many Queensland fun runs, um, she looks, she's run 2.45, she ran across in, uh, I saw her in England running in the uh, English Marathon, uh, not this year, the year before, and she she was one of, uh, a top echelon of, of Australian runners, but the fact that she's only run two, uh, two hours 44, um, it's probably indicative again, as I said before, about the uh, about the conditions. They must have been fairly hard out there, harder than what we what we thought sitting here in the cool of the, uh, of the studio. 